Welcome, 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 welcome. Blessings to all of you. You're joining us for this very special edition of Spotlight on Music. I want to welcome you and thank God for you sharing. Listen, what I want you to do is to like and share. You have a unique opportunity tonight. Uh, those of you that care to, to come on live with me and join in uh, this brief dialogue that we plan on having tonight uh, when we talk about gospel music, past, present, and future. Blessings to you. And uh, join us in the comment section if you don't want to come on live, uh, preferably. Uh, you'll come on with me that we can discuss your point of view when it comes to gospel music here in this 21st century. Uh, we've come a long way and uh, there's been some uh, changes, some noticeable changes and differences in our uh, music that we call worship music, gospel music, and the division of the gospel music in various kinds of categories. We want to talk a little bit about that and then I'm going to make some suggestions for you to do further research that can help you form an honest and unbiased opinion about uh, the new songs, the songwriting, and the way we handle what we call worship in this 21st century, what we call church music or worship music, gospel music, the gospel song, the hymns, the anthems, the Negro spirituals, uh, the praise and worship craze that we hear about so much now. Uh, we just want to kind of uh, skim the surface and do an icebreaker. Tonight I, I'm going to plan to have soon a uh, well-versed and experienced type of uh, panel that I can bring some of the, what I would consider some of the best minds and the uh, experts in their field, those that have been around. And then we're going to do an all-age, cross-the-board age type mixture so that we have uh, those that are younger on and those that are older. We want to get the best of both worlds so that uh, we won't sound like we're being dogmatic or so, so opinionated. And we don't want to sound dated, you know, because, you know, you know, some of y'all, y'all are data, y'all are data person, you know, you, y'all either old school, no school, or uh, you a millennial. Uh, all these tags don't mean nothing if you not serving the Lord and worshiping uh, the creator more than the creatures. And that's, that's what we're having uh, in our worship music today. So there's a lot on um, uh, YouTube. Uh, and, and just go there, and, and there's one specific video. I was going to play it, but I don't want to run into any um, copyright infringements. Uh, but there's some great videos on YouTube where we've got others who are doing in-depth research on uh, this particular subject of gospel music, what has happened to it over the years. Has it evolved or are we going backwards or just 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 what do you think? And so I, I want to kind of open up uh, and let me mention this. Please pray for our guest, uh, our sister in Columbus, Ohio, Sister Trina, who was supposed to be on Trina Trin. She was a great musician, great singer, composer, you know, and she had, had fell ill. But we're keeping her lifted in prayer and um as soon as she is better, we're going to uh, have that interview with my sister. And you'll be glad you waited because here is what I call one of the nations, the world's best kept secret. Uh, great, great spirit, great soul, a musician extraordinary. I tell you, uh, a great minstrel, minstrel uh, of music. And uh, again, she's in the Columbus, Ohio area, working with ministry there and doing her own thing for the Lord. So listen, 
So I just didn't want to not do something tonight. So uh, this dropped in my spirit. We're going to talk about this. Blessings Evangelist Jackie Johnson and my brother Keith, Keith Johnson. Uh, my God, he's starting out good already. Why are churches looking like the club? <laughs> no choir stands. Oh, my God. And what, <laughs> what the age type mix is anything sacred anymore. I, I'm with you, brother. And that's why I, I want you to go and and look at some of the videos. Uh, and it's called, uh, let, me, let me look at it. It's called uh, uh, Smart Christian or something like that. But uh, I, I'll get the name of it, of some of these videos. They're out there and they um, talk about gospel music. All you got to do is put in the title, what happened to gospel music that that's that's what you can type in when you go to youtube what happened to gospel music and uh trust me when you view that particular piece of documentation how this young man had put it together it, it will make you think it will make you think uh, one segment that he does that, that really captured my attention is when uh, there was a BT, BET concert with some gospel artists, I won't call their name, uh, and uh, he turned the volume off and he asked the question, can you tell whether or not they're glorifying God or what, what are they doing? You know, you got the smoke machines, you got the lights now, you, you got all of this stuff, you got people running up and down the stage, um, and good question, uh, Elder Keith, because uh, we're living in that day. Uh, everybody's putting in spotlights. They're renovating their pulpit areas. And some of them don't know why they're doing it. They're just doing what they see other people do. And they're buying the LED screens, the giant ones, and making them the background, cutting off the lights at the church, and then... You, you know, all you need is a bag of popcorn, some hot dogs, and a large 32-ounce uh, Coke, you know, and, uh, and, and, and the old, like at the ballpark with the baseball game, the guy goes around selling bags of peanuts, you know. Yes, keep smoke machines. I mean, they're doing it all, and uh, you wonder whether or not it's to glorify God or is it a glorified performance? Bottom line, performance or praise and worship to God. And uh, of course, money's involved too now, you know. And then there's some artists, you know, uh, uh, I'm, I'm just not going to call names, but you know who they are, want to be rock stars anyway, you know. And there's that thin line there that uh, that's, that's what they're doing. And they are attracting the world they're not influencing the world. They're attracting the world. And the world has such a greater influence on them because of the money. Okay. You know, if gospel music or music is your career and your life and somebody's offering you fifty to $100,000 a gig and you can do four or five of them a month, come on. i wait. I'm waiting on y'all to get in the comment section, you know. You got some choices to make. The record companies, I know about that firsthand. They will offer you, you know, contracts where they are in control because they will tell you up front, we, we, we will give you what you want, but we got to recoup our investment. That's what the contract will say. Before you can make anything as far as uh, royalties, mechanical royalties, you know, the sale of the actual product product itself, then they want your publishing so that when there's any airplay, they're going to get a percentage of that. And it's your original composition, and you've done all the work, you've done the prayer, the fasting, and now you signed a contract. Uh, sometimes some of these folks have signed a contract with the devil because they control their life. But yeah, they, they're going to make sure you're taken care of after they're taken care of. Because where do you think they're getting this money from? 
Look at look at the R and B world. Look at the rappers. Where do you think these rappers are getting this money from? They're getting it from people who got money. And where do you think they're getting the money from? Okay, they're not going to give you a hundred thousand dollars or half a million dollar contract over a course of two or three years, and not know how they're going to recoup that plus make a profit. And their profit margin is 100%, sometimes as much as 2 to 300% of what they invested in you. Okay, so, and, and with the promoters now, most artists are becoming very smart where they are producing their own concerts and they get a couple of investors, pay them off, make their money, and start producing their own concert. That's what some of these artists are doing now. And they're, caught, they're attaching spiritual titles to it on their tours to make you think it's all about God. No, it's not. It's all about you buying a ticket and coming. Listen, I don't have a problem with it, but, but my problem, on the other hand, is go ahead on and call it a concert and do your performance. Don't say you're glorifying God because you're not. You're not glorifying God, not with all of the stuff y'all doing, not with not with these gyrations and these this choreography and and the look that the girls, the ladies have, and the look that some of the guys have, and and the 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 dancing. I mean, you just outright dancing. Come on, you just outright jigging and juggling and wiggling and wobbling. <laughs> Doing the wobble wobble, as they say. Listen, y'all, God is not getting any glory out of that. And it's amazing how they start out good and, and they become uh, monsters. They, be, they become greedy after filthy lucre. You know, they get a taste of that money, they put them on TV, they get a Grammy, or they, they, they get a Stella, or they get a Dove or they get some kind of award and recognition. And uh, there they go, it's, it's on and, the kids say it's on and popping. So where are we past gospel music? I know gospel music has evolved. Uh, it's taken its place as an art form, but I'm gonna say it again and I'm gonna stand on it. Uh, the late Professor Chris Ware said, I'm standing on this truth. You know, we in Detroit, we have used to have that uh, well-known department store called J.L. Hudson's. He said, I'm standing on a stack of Bibles as tall as Hudson's. I just believe God. You know, the gospel music is not dated. I can't hear y'all. I said gospel music is not dated at all. There is no expiration date on the gospel the preach word, nor the worship, nor the song, nor the music. So let's, let's get that in our minds. What is happening is that there are those who have been hoodwinked or manipulated by uh, the record label industry until they congratulate themselves on being in the top first 100, the top 50, the top 25, and then the top 10 or top 40, you know. You see, gospel didn't know nothing about top 40. They got that from R&B, you know, when it comes to the charts. Top 40 in any urban city among radio stations. And um, then some radio stations started with gospel like they did with R&B, their top 10 of the week on their playlist. You know, and depending on the A and R department of a record company, how much they invested uh, to promote that particular artist, they may take one or two songs from a project and highlight it across the country or in a certain region, just like the Midwest market. You know, you 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 got Michigan, you got Ohio, uh, you got Illinois. And and then then you got Indiana, okay. Though though those are some strong states, and uh, well let's just take Michigan. If you can get 
you know, I'm talking to you gospel artists now. If you can uh, distribute all, that your single now all over just Michigan, in every suburb, in every major city in Michigan, you know, cities like Lansing, cities like Detroit, cities, you know, like Dearborn, Pontiac. I mean, all these are some, some good places where you can possibly do well in promoting uh, your music. And then you got other places far away, Grand Rapids, Jackson, just go straight up 94, Ann Arbor, just, just go down, you know, and then go, go, go out uh, 75 to some places as far as Monroe, Michigan, and all up uh, to E Course, and, and then go the other way, Inkster, and all these other, there, there's so many ways to do it, but you gotta have somebody do it, and you gotta pay them to do it. You know, distribution is the key. And why am I mentioning that? I said because when you when you think of the market and when you think of the possibility, uh, if you got the time or if you've got what is called the capital or the budget uh, to have somebody to be your PR person, then you most likely can get that done. You know, we don't have Bible bookstores anymore. Okay, mom and pop radio stations or mom and pop radio shops, record shops, you know. We don't have Simpsons records anymore here. Coachman, huh? Alma and Carl's. Some of these key places, you know, I, I, I think that I mentioned Simpkins record and then there was Chantonique records. Uh, I'm dating myself now, y'all, you know. Uh, uh, churches used to sell uh, their church projects from their church bookstores or whatever, church tech. I mean, we don't have that anymore. You used to go be able to go to Grand Bible and, and pick up gospel music and, and uh, blessings to a bishop or pastor, Pastor Baker over there at ba Baker's old Grand River Bible and bookstore. Y'all remember Globe Bible? Yeah, you used to you'd be able to go and find some music in there on Jefferson and, and then they had some other places and then uh, Dixon's Bible and Bookstore and all of those different places that we were able to buy our Bibles, our robes and all of our study material and along with that uh, gospel music and and then some of the bigger places. Now when these places came along, you know we when I started out we didn't have Best Buy you know, and, and all of these other outlets that they got now. Now you can buy uh, uh, your records or CDs in Target and Best Buy and, and Myers and, and a whole lot of places now, you know? And, uh, but you've got to have the capital of the budget. You know, you can go to Walmart and, and, and find some music. You can go ahead, I mean, so what am I saying? You know, we used to have all these places that were available to us and, and they promoted it. I'm trying to think of the name of the guy uh, that was on Mac Avenue and uh, St. St. Alban. Uh, 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 Brother Keith probably can help me with that name, you know, but uh, I come along in a day when all of that was around and our hangout during the youth, community youth ensemble days was uh, uh, over there on Holbrook, uh, right there at Elmer and Carl's, the record shop, the music school, and on the corner where the community youth ensemble used to rehearse. Now, we were taught hymns, we were taught gospels, we were taught uh, Negro spirituals and anthems. You know, of course our forte was gospel music. And, uh, and through that particular group, a lot of writers uh, came to be known, uh, musicians, choir directors, uh, a lot of them, if I call their names, you will remember them or know, know them, like the Reverend Donald Vales, Dr. Dorgan Needham, Cass Hudson and Columbus Mann, uh, Reverend Ralph Long, James Long, you know, Gregory Brown, I mean, so many uh, of the Journey brothers, Joseph Journey, Lamont Journey, Sandra Fever, you know, God rest her soul, all, some of these great, great, great singers. And there was a time, because he didn't really do too much with the choir, there was a time when even Marvin Gaye would come around and hang around down at Carl, Alma and Carl's. Uh, 
Uh, Alma Lois Hendricks Parham was great friends with Dr. Maddie Moss Clark. Uh, she did most of Dr. Clark's publishing in the early days, same way with Beverly Glenn and, and those people down there. And, and, and when you go back and, and hear that, that uh, majestic, nostalgic gospel music, can I tell y'all something? Those songs that Beverly Glenn wrote then, the, the songs that uh, Alma Hendrix wrote in re a rearrange, arrangements of hymns, Dorgan Needham and, and, and Ernest Needham, James Long, Ralph Long, Donald Bells, all of those people, those songs that they wrote back then can be sung today. And some of you young people, if you heard them, you, you would almost declare that that can't be a 50 or 40 year old song. Yes, it is, you know. Don't throw away, don't throw away your, your, your heritage. Don't throw away your legacy. These songs, I mean, if you listen to the songs, you learn how to write a good message, song, a Bible-based, a biblically-based song, something that will get you from Monday to Tuesday, you know. Have you noticed in the industry, and I'm talking to you who pay attention to it, uh, and, and I need some of the musicians that are out there, y'all really need to be chiming in, you know. Have you noticed the trend even though we hear new songs, you hear them for about 90 days, maybe six months, depending on who's putting out something behind them, and then you don't hear them no more. But you look around the industry, I can't, I lost count of how many times you hear people pick up the words out of the hymn, Amazing Grace. When they done ran out of words, they'll make up a verse and say, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. How many times have y'all heard that in a song? And then how many times have you not heard young musicians, the original, huh? The original amazing grace. I'm not talking about the arrangement of it. Pass me down on General Savior. I'm not talking about Douglas Miller's arrangement, huh? He's real. I'm not talking about a uh, John P. Key's arrangement. I'm talking about the hymn. You know, I'm not talking about... You, you, you got to know. Pass, pass. I'm going back. I'm going back to, to our uh, black Negro heritage of what songs were born out of. They were born out of depression. They were born out of experience. They were born out, born out of change. They were born out of heartache, blood, sweat, and tears. The songs that, when you go back, there are some books out about uh, the stories behind the hymns. Get that book, 101 Hymns, and they give you the story of how these hymns were written and out of what experience. I mean, when you go back to Thomas Dorsey and Precious Lord, how he uh, was in an unforeseen tragic situation where his wife, you know, was ill. And, and uh, uh, I'm trying to recall, uh, I think he lost, lost the first child. But uh, there, there are so many stories, and he was so depressed, and he started uttering those words in an experience that affected his whole life. And he wrote those words, Precious Lord, take my hand. And guess what we're doing? We're still singing it today. We've, we've got a whole lot of folk that take it and do arrangements and they, you know, have updated, you know, the beat or whatever. And, and that's okay as long as it's tastefully done. But I certainly encourage the original to know the origin of music and where they come, the songs come from. Uh, that is so important. Uh, for the educational process of those who do church music today. And I'm saying this because one of our well-known churches right here in the city, I got a call today. Musicians, I'm talking to you now. I got a call today. The pastor is uh, a musical pastor, and he knows what church music ought to be like. He's seeking a musician. But, I, you know, I just told, you know, person that called me, you know, I, I I can't recommend none of these guys because they don't want to study, they don't want to up their game, 
but they want to go in and ask for five and six hundred dollars coming in the door for what? What do you bring into the table? You know, most of these you musicians, and I'm being Bishop Woods, I'm being Andre Woods, I'm being your mentor now. Most of you are lazy, most of you don't study. And because you've got a couple of gigs, you know, in other places, you know, on weekends, or you traveled or toured with some people, what happened during the pandemic? All that got shut down, didn't it? I've been trying to tell y'all now, let me tell you this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have as one of my guests uh, next week, my guest is going to be uh, the president of the Detroit Federation of Musicians, Mr. George Troyer. And uh, you'll be able to hear the benefits of being a member. See, because I tried to tell some of you all that when we did a membership campaign a few years ago, you know, and I had him to come to the Mount Zion Baptist Church, George Troyer, also Dr. Nord Duncan from Wayne State University, who's over the music department. He came to talk about the importance of music education how far you can go with just getting basics and learning music, the job opportunity, unlimited. You know, y'all say the sky's the limit. It can't be the limit when, when you're, you're not prepared to go to soar. How can the sky not be the limit for you if all you know how to play is in two keys and then you get on the piano and transpose them the cat, the, this is, no. You got an opportunity to learn how to sight read, do notation. De listen, no excuses. No more. Stop all that. You know, stop it. And then you want to go into a church. You're only there maybe two, three. Some of y'all may be at that church maybe four hours a week. And if they paid you $100 an hour, you know, and then you want tax-free money. Then you want them to pay you over that amount so you can take home a certain amount. Come on. You know, I, I'm of the opinion. It's just, just me. Y'all ain't got to. It coming from me. I've been here, been there. I've been around. I'm of the opinion if a, if, if a, a lady or a, woman, a guy wants uh, to present themselves on that level, they got to first of all have one or two things, the education and experience or the experience and education. <laughs> they got to have personality, they got to have people skills, and then they got to know their craft. Okay? And as far as I'm concerned in church, you need to be anointed. You need to be saved. You don't need to be trying to do God's music and be in a spiritual leadership position and you you the biggest devil. You on your way to hell yourself. That just, just don't work. Oil and water don't mix. It don't work. And that's why some of you can't stay nowhere. You're unstable. You're double-minded. You can't make up your mind. And then you don't want to get nowhere and build one of the pastors lamented to me, said, Bishop, I'm willing to, to bring somebody in, and if they're willing to work with me and we grow together. Well, how do you think all, a whole lot of us started? I started playing with play all day and all night. My grandfather told me, I'm not paying you to, to practice on us. No. Matter of fact, a whole lot of us, when you look around the landscape today, you know, you talk about Andre Woods, Rudolph Stanville, Greg Pearson, Gregory Troy, all these, E. Thomas Whitfield. You talk about, you start calling names. A lot of these folk wasn't getting paid that kind of, that. Come on, y'all. And they were stable. They built. They proved themselves, and God blessed them. And still is, you know. And, and I'm saying this because 
nothing's really changed when it comes to how God can bless you. It's up to you. Preparation precedes the blessing. That's where your education comes in. You're fasting, you're praying, you're practicing, preparing to teach. Y'all don't want to teach the choir. Y'all don't want to, you just want to come in and play. Somebody else do the work. Just send me the music. I learn it. I'll show up. But you want $500, $600. And then you don't even want to dress the part no more. Y'all want to wear y'all baseball caps at church, your T-shirts, your Timberlands, your toe-out jeans. You know, why are we paying you? I tell them all the time, ain't no need you looking my way or working on nothing I'm working on, with no, uh, especially publicly, you know, and I'm going to pay you. No, there, there, there is some protocols you got to adhere to. I can't use you. And I can say that because I can play myself. Now, yeah, I, yeah, I, I can. And guess what? I can play what you play. But can you play what I play? And I'm not being arrogant. I'm not being cocky. This is just tough love tonight. That's all it is. And, and, and it's sad that we've got so many hurting churches and all of you, these floods of musicians who can't make up their mind, you know, what they want to do with their life. You know, and then when all this other stuff, when they lay you off from the club and the, the plays are not doing well, then, then y'all inboxing me, talking about can I find you a church? No. I can't find you a church because what you're going to do as soon as they offer you $5 more, then you're ready to take a leave of absence. You just got there. You want to take a leave of absence for, for three months because you want a tour. I mean, I had no problem with that. Go on and live and get your experience. But you ain't got no job. You ain't got nothing stable to come home to. Okay, just like I'm telling you, this pandemic hit. And so I, I purposely invited uh, George Troyer, the president, and we're going to talk about the benefits, all of the things that some of you suffered during the pandemic was needless. All you had to do was be a member. They had, they had all kind of grants and funding and monies available to help people pay. They paid musicians rent. They paid their insurance. And I mean, they bought groceries. They had all of the benefits. Y'all throw away more than $100 a night sometimes just trying to impress somebody. Get you a membership. Prepare yourself. And they offer insurance. I ain't going to let the cat out of the bag. But we're talking about that uh, when we when we get together. So y'all need to plan now to, to have your ear prepared to get some information. You perish from a lack of knowledge, okay? Yeah, Keith, they're dancing. It's not the holy dance. It's... It's no praise, just body work. Yeah, that, that, that's what's happening. Uh, people got a way of justifying, and sometimes they will, they will use scripture to try to make it fit what they wanted to say or to defend their actions, you know. Um, see, when Solomon built the temple, God gave him the blueprint, you know. We're, we're building houses of worship, or let me say this, we're defacing houses of worship based on what we call being culturally relevant. Oh my God. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a, a sermon on that, and I know ain't nobody going to too much light about this stuff trying to be relevant. You mean to tell me the Word of God in all 66 books, you can't find something relevant. He said, and I and I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Changing your pulpit and tearing out and turning down the lights and turning on spotlights and smoke machines ain't going to get nobody saved. That's just gone and admitted. That's, that's you. That's just something you want to do. And guess what? 
Andre Sonny Woods is okay with you just doing what you want to do. Where I have the problem at is when y'all start trying to be spiritual and justifying stuff that ain't got nothing to do with salvation. Ain't nothing to do with a man's soul being lost or saved. But what is happening now, if you got your ear to the ground, if you got your if you if you listening, what is happening? Po folk that are really seeking Christ, who might visit a church, are beginning to ask questions. Well, I didn't know they was doing all of this. Uh, I'm gonna be on Sunday night talking about some of this. I want y'all to tune into my broadcast Sunday night, WVCT, uh, Detroit Radio. Uh, the Interdenominational Seminary Churches USA, our, our Faith Covenant Partners Global Outreach Ministry. I'm just doing some, some what my grandfather used to call table talk. I'm, I'm giving some words of wisdom, some counsel uh, about some things because I'm nervous. I'm nervous about the church. God forbid something happened to me uh, and I don't leave some instruction and I try to I try to position myself to be reachable, and to counsel, to mentor, but I I can't for, I'm not gonna force myself on people, I'm not gonna chase you, to teach you or to train you or to counsel you. I'm not doing that. Now, as the Lord we're having, we opened up, we do some things virtually, and give information. You know, you 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 got to be willing to come and get it. And, and do it that way, you know, so that's that's all I'm saying, you know, you, you got to be able to do that, you know, uh, blessings to you, Pastor uh, Edward Davy, man, you need to be on here with me, great minstrel and pastor, he got the best of both worlds, Rico Vance, tell the whole truth, but I'm trying, man, it's, uh, and, and uh, you know, Sometimes, you know, you try not to be offensive. You try not to be so opinionated. But, you know, I really feel sad for this generation of musicians. And uh, they try to perpetrate, perpetrate that they got the camaraderie that I grew up with with other musicians. But I, I really don't see it. You know, I see a lot of competition. I see a lot of jealousy. I see a lot of backbiting and a lot of you know, backstab. Y'all used to stab folk in the back, but now y'all stab them in the heart looking at them. <laughs> it's really something. Hey, I got uh, uh, Dr. Brian Gary. Man, come on on here and, and uh, join this conversation. Let me put you up here. He got his picture up there, you know, and hopefully he'll come on camera. But, but listen, y'all, uh, gospel music, and, 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 I, and I did that purposely, past, present, and future, because there ought to be a merger as we bridge the gap of that music from then coming forth now. You know, we don't throw the baby out with the bath water. I mean, you know, there, there, there's things we can do. If you don't like the hymns in the hymn book, then write one. That's my challenge to you. If you don't like the old Negro spirituals and the anthems, you don't want to sing, let Mount, Rock, Mount Zion rejoice no more, then write one. Go on your knees and pray and ask God to touch your heart and your mind. You know, when we get to the Advent season and you don't want to do the Hallelujah Chorus no more, then write, write one. Stop all of that. And a lot of y'all complain because you don't read music and you don't study to get it. Okay, I get it. Fine. There's a whole lot of folk who don't maybe read music fluently or as they desire to, but they don't. that don't stop them from studying. You know, I tell people all the time, one of your greatest tools, I don't even find them in the church no more. I, I, when I do the workshops, the greatest tool that the church would offer was the hymn book, because in the back of the hymn book, you know, they, they had all kinds of suggestions for the Advent season, the Christmas season, and then the uh, uh, Ash Wednesday and the Lenten season, and then the Easter season, you had you had all kind of stuff available to you. All you had to do was go in the back of the hymnal, and they had the songs categorized and listed for you. All you had to do was learn them and teach them. 
But that's too much like work for y'all, you know. But you want to show up Sunday in your Timberlands and your T-shirt, toe out in the front and the back. It's got grease stains on it. Then you want to sit up in church and complain and then get paid. Now, the choir are members of the church. They pay tithes and they give offering. But they, well, some churches, a lot of them ain't doing it no more, you know. They got to buy uniforms that match and buy robes. Here you are getting paid and won't even put on a decent shirt, pair of, uh, pair of slacks, and some dress shoes for a couple of hours. I don't get that. And that's why a lot of musicians that work with me would get mad because I told them, here's what you're not going to do on my staff or working with me or when I was pastoring. I told them up front, I'm not, here's what you're not going to do. <laughs> you're not coming in like that. We represent the king. I mean, the Lord deserves our very best. Blessings, Brian. Man, thank you for chiming in. Doc, uh, you need to give some wisdom on this subject here. Hey, to uh, bless you, Bishop. Yeah, Dr. Kenny Alexander. See, all y'all veterans, I, I need some backup. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Alexander. <laughs> Oh man, they they in the comment section. Thank you again, Keith Johnson and uh, Pastor Edward L. Davey. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about, man. It's it's a new day. I understand that. And here's what they do, Brian. They say, well, you know, what well, God is doing a new thing. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Y'all 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 tell me where the God what God done change so. It's an oxymoron, or y'all y'all just doing what y'all want to do. On one hand, he say, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. He ain't changed his protocol to worship. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Ain't no new law to that. Y'all stop making up stuff and taking stuff out of context because you want to get away with doing what you want to do, you know, at your church where you, where the pastors trusted you and put mm -hmm. you over his people or her people and you over there acting a fool. What's up with that? What's up with them, Brian? I really wish I knew, but it's a different generation. Um, just like you said, that they're doing whatever they want to do. And in some cases that the ministers and the pastors are letting them do whatever they want to do. You know, there's no responsibility. There's no accountability. Um, I remember when I first started playing, you had to respect the church, and the church is not being respected. So oh, no. One thing that has changed is we've changed. God hasn't changed. Not at all. So that's one of the things that's really missing in the church. Yeah, it's it's something else, man. It really is. I I um I get so discouraged. I, I, I be kidding, I said, I said, I'm going to start the Nicodemus ministry because some of the pastors, well-known pastors in the city, they call, man, I need, I need somebody, but I just can't get anybody. I said, well, trust me, my name is on the line too. I ain't going to, I don't want you calling me, talking about you done sent me this rascal. I, and some of these guys, you know, they'll say, can you find me? I'm looking for early service. I'm looking for this. Well, you know, come on. The reason why you all can't get nothing to work for you because, you know, you you plan for a different church every Sunday. Sometimes two and three churches in one Sunday. And so, you 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 not know where to 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 drop your anchor, where you can start building and and growing, you know, and 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 uh, grow with the church spiritually as well, you know, respectfully so, you know. Yes, there are a lot of pastors who are not musically inclined, but they're still the pastor and they got an idea. They do want, you know, a music department if they trust in you. My thing is, is, is uh, you know, take care of business and 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 all you got is your name. Trust me, man. Some of these guys, I mentioned them to certain pastors, and they said, "Uh-uh." 
So it's stuff they done done I don't even know nothing about. I'm like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> you know, <laughs> let me scratch that name off the list. I can't recommend them because this report sounds kind of serious, you know. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that, you know, this generation of musicians will study their craft and, and prepare themselves, you know, it, those that want to be songwriters, those that want to be directors, those that that want to be artists or whatever they want to be, you know, you got you got to put some time into that. Mm -hmm. Just don't go to bed and wake up wonderful. <laughs> you know, it, it's not gonna happen. You know, and and you got to earn respect in the music industry, so you can walk among other musicians, you know, who know you, respect you and uh, uh, don't mind collaborating with you, working with you, and that type of thing. That's how I grew up, man. We, you know, everybody knew everybody, everybody. If they needed a musician, they invite me to be their guest. If I need, I'd invite them to be my guest. And we, we, we would hang out on that level and support each other's everything. You know, I see a little bit of it among some of them, but I really get messed up when I hear on the same day, he having something and they having something, an hour apart. You know, y'all know, you know, when I was growing up, everybody knew the Monday before Thanksgiving was all good things. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew. Everybody knew, uh, when was it? Was it October? I think it was with Unity. Everybody knew Unity when they were going to Ford Auditorium. Everybody knew what was happening. Everybody knew in January how they celebrated at, at Pratt Tabernacle, their Founders Day and, and July and so many other things that they were doing. Everybody knew these, these special times. Everybody knew when uh, Miss Lemon and the Lemon Gospel Singers Choir anniversary was, John Everhart. Everybody knew those dates. They had those annual dates down. And, and you look up and everybody was supporting everybody. All of the time, Dr. Maddie Moss Clark, whenever she had something at State Temple, you know, everybody knew. So it wasn't where you going, that's where you was going. <laughs> you know, wasn't no question about it. But but nowadays, man, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't understand, you know, what their, what their whole agenda and mentality is when it comes to uh, supporting each other. I don't know if it's a competitive spirit or or what this thing is, man. It's, it's just strange to me. I can't get with it. You know, I just, I don't understand. So when I speak of gospel music of the past, I'm talking about that music that some of us grew up on. If you're over 40, then you understand what I'm talking about. And even uh, those that study that's under 40, and you're in a a church that may still sing a morning hymn. Or uh, some churches still do devotion with the deacons. You know, they might be far and few, but there are some that do that. There's still some who insist on a congregational hymn. You know, churches like Hartford, they, they still do anthems and and there's some a whole lot of other churches. They they're gonna do a hymn. So you can't get employment over there not knowing no hymns. At least sight reading or something. You know, uh, Tabernacle with Nathan Johnson in. I'll never forget when they were uh, trying to hire an organist. You know, these young cats, you know, you're not going to make it because Pastor Johnson is a musician himself. And if he need to, he'll get over there and, and play itself you know that's what i'm talking about man and 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 even before pastor branch yeah branch uh a lot of people because he didn't play a lot in his later years a musician he knew the music and he had a structured music department his whole tenure as pastor you know and and when you look at the landscape of the churches today new bethel those churches that that we grew up listening to on the radio and 
a whole lot of churches. You know, everybody's trying to perfect their music program uh, to at least have something uh, that that their parishioners can be proud of and that will honor God. But man, some of these folk, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, man. Listen, man, do you find it hard uh, talking to these young cats to give them just your take on just sharing wisdom with them about where they are musically? No, um, I really haven't come across any young musicians who I know who plays every Sunday. Um, they take the time to listen. Um, sometimes right. they give me a call and ask me a question. Um, there's a couple at my church who want to learn the old hymns of the church. Yeah. You know, even though that we don't do hymns where I'm at, but they um they still want to know because sometimes they do get that phone call where they go to a church where it does the old hymns and they have to read and so forth. So I really haven't come across that at all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so pretty much should they reach out and give me a call. Yeah, and and, and I, like I tell some of these musicians, they be trying to get these funeral home gigs well, you don't never know what they're going to say. You don't have a clue. <laughs> so <laughs> some of them come in with their original pieces. And and uh, i never forget, I was playing for a friend. This woman had her own personal hymn book. And she kept telling me, I can't decide what I'm going to do today. I said, well, okay. You know, but things like that scares these some of these guys because they, you know, Either they can't pick it up, sight read it, or whatever, and then they're just not familiar with them. Mm -hmm. you know? And so I try to suggest to them, you know, uh, whether or not you're obligated to do it on a regular basis, just take some time in your practice time to familiarize yourself with some of the standards, mm -hmm. you know, because most people, they're going to sing a familiar one as opposed to seeing something that people are not familiar with, especially at, at funerals or anniversaries and certain kind of services like that. So, you know, I, I, I think it's a plus if they just take the time to do it, you know, providing they will. But let me ask you this, Brian, since I got you here. Oh, Sherry Carwell, y'all y'all need to be on here with us, you know, live so we can see your smiling faces. <laughs> uh, Sherry say Brian is the one that taught me how to play in the AME church. <laughs> Sherry Carwell. Yeah. Oh, sister. Yeah. Okay. okay. Hello. She, oh, they are. They, Y'all speaking to each other in the comment section. Come on here and speak to each other with us. <laughs> they shout them. Yeah, man. But what's your take on uh, I praise music, and now that we're getting back to more in-person worship, some people are bringing at least a few members of the choir back slowly. Uh, some people have even brought the whole choir back, especially some of the community choirs, um, uh, versus the praise team. And, and, and I'm not trying to cause a fight or a competition, but, you know, most of us, I don't have a problem with the praise team. I'm just pro choir. I'm just sorry. I just <laughs> you'll be both Bishop. <laughs> I mean, most of the music I write, I hear a choir. Mm -hmm. Unless it's a soloist, but you know, I, I got some stuff now. I, I I do not hear no group. When I had a group, I knew who I had in the group. Mm -hmm. So I could I could really target a particular voice for certain songs that I might arrange or write. And then I tell people all the time, when I had Chosen, I was fortunate because every one of them were musicians and singers and yes, could Lord. write themselves. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to worry about that by myself. But uh, when it comes to the church with with uh, uh, 20 or more or whatever, you know, you, you, you want to try to create a good sound, but you want them to sing some some good uh, Bible-based music that can bless the congregation. And so 
What do you think about some of the songs that don't mention, don't mean mention Jesus? I mean, it's, it's about me, mine, and I, and I'm, I'm doing this. I want this. I'm like, I'm like when y'all going to talk about Jesus? Right. Um, but the church that I attend now, though, we got a, a pretty good praise team. Um, I have to really say that. Um, a majority of the songs that they do sing, that it does mention you know, Jesus in the words or God in the words, and every now and then, but they will put out like a old school hymn. But like yourself, that I really do miss the Hammond organ on Sunday mornings. Oh man. I miss hearing that Hammond organ. I miss that choir. I miss that bass section, you know, to rock in, you know, and uh, <laughs> the, the, first, the first and the sopranos, you know, that I do miss, but um, I think, that it will start coming back eventually. Um, it's going to take much prayer on that. Yeah. And yeah kind yeah. of bring it back into the church because you do have a lot of people who still want to have those, those songs. You still want to have that, you know, so those, I really do miss that a lot. Well, one, one of the things that, that, that um, scare me is, um, some of those songs, and I think some of the musicians pick them because I've heard Leo Davis, I heard Jimmy Abington say it, I heard a lot of people talk about some of those songs are seven eleven songs, <laughs> seven words that they sang eleven times. Right. I'm like, okay, I, I stay away from them, but I enjoy I I enjoy a lot of them. If 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 it's a well rehearsed a uh, group of singers, praise team, or whatever. What I don't like is some of the praise teams I encounter is they get to, they start fussing at you and all that. Right. Like I, I told this one guy, man, if you sing, we'll get with you. You up there? I don't feel like clapping my hand. I don't feel like touching my neighbor. And right now, we ain't touching nobody, no way. You know. Wow. <laughs> we we not <laughs> running around the church. We're not doing it. Touch your neighbor. Hug your neighbor do all of that kind of stuff just sing please and don't be singing one song for 20 minutes right i heard i'm trying to think of this praise team i heard them on youtube they did such a fantastic medley i mean where they just hit it one two three one and and they they was maybe up there five or six minutes and they was gone mm. but they engaged me even on on the screen on the on the live, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they caught my attention. Very, very expressive, very lively, and in in, in the words, the music, the, the lyrics had substance, you know. And it was it was really professionally done. I mean, you know, and and I tell people all the time, I, you know, I understand the approach today where they're trying to capture the imagination or influence the younger age group or mm -hmm. whatever, all of that is fine. But like I'm telling them, we were your age too. And they did a fine job influencing us with mm -hmm. those hymns and spirituals and everything else. You know, I don't know what would have happened 20 years ago if we had Facebook and if we had smoke machines and lights in our churches. Well, I kind of do know because my grandfather wasn't going to have it. <laughs> I kind of know, you know, uh, that we had to wear a uniform. And so mm -hmm. I ask people all the time, I say, you know, it's, it's amazing how, uh, especially when I talk to musicians, it's amazing how y'all want to talk dollar, but y'all don't want to uh, be a collective corporate body. I said, man, Burger King, they ain't making nothing but minimum wage. And they got the uniforms, and they gotta wear them. You right, right. Go with them. Mm -hmm. Wendy's and all, all these other places, and most fine dining, uh, finding dining establishments, if they don't have a a set uniform, they either have a black apron, black shirt, black slacks, same way with the ladies, or they got something matching, t-shirts or whatever. You know, it ain't just come in looking any kind of way. Right. Proper dress, proper protocols, and present yourself. 
and then 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 we want God to give us uh, His best, but we're not offering Him our best. best in some on some levels. But you said something key that I I think we need to uh, hit real quick. The pastors allowed some of this stuff. I got a pastor now. He allowed what you talking about, and now he trying to find a way to get rid of it. Mm. I said. <laughs> Just go on and do it, man. You you hire them and you pay them, and they don't want to change now. And 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 not only are you frustrated, but your people don't start complaining about you uh -huh. know the music and the attitude and the uh, the attire and all. And then when your members, your choir, your praise, or whoever, you know, come on, you you got to kind of listen to these people. You know, mm -hmm. or they're the ones making the sacrifice to give and do whatever's done need to be done financially. So that that's that's a gray area. That's a gray area. Very and, much so. And speaking of Sherry Carwell with herself, you know, yeah. we were talking the other day about an experience. And what's up with these churches that want to hire musicians, but they got non-musical people on their music committees. <laughs> trying to <laughs> oh my God. Trying to interview. How are you going to interview somebody you don't know where C is on the keyboard? Right. You know, you don't sing, play, or beat the drums or the spoon. But then you want to interview somebody. So what you going to ask them? You don't know nothing about music. Right. You don't even know what you're listening to. You have no clue. <laughs> like, but they in the they in the position to make decisions on on the hiring of somebody who know what they're doing. It it amazes me how some folk are doing that. I I, I don't get it. I I really don't. I don't get this. Listen, if y'all got a question, you know, hurry up and ask us because we're gonna be gone in a little while. I just wanted to break the ice and talk about this a little bit and um, uh, kind of raise the question where our music is now and where is it going? And I think if we keep following the dictates of the music industry, it's real unpredictable because the way I see it, what they have done in the last 20, 25 years just gospel music, when you look in Billboard, it's too many categories. Mm -hmm. Urban gospel, inspirational gospel, rock gospel. I'm like, what? What are y'all doing? Traditional gospel, contemporary gospel. Yes. Mm -hmm. All of that stuff. I mean, they, they, they have really gone uh, uh, to the extreme to try to squeeze blood out of a term. They're getting everything they can out of gospel music. Uh, they really want it to cross over uh, if they can make it do it, but then they'll lose some of the market. But some of the artists, they might as well, hey, cause the way these tours and concerts are coming off now, man, you don't know. Uh, again, go to YouTube and look at uh, Put in the search what happened to gospel music where there there is a very informative piece and give example of what's going on in gospel today and why it looks the way it is and these concerts and these tours and and uh the question becomes is the world influencing us or are we influencing the world are young people really getting saved at these concerts or is it just a concert and a performance? I mean, if that's what it is, that's what it is. Right. Just, just call it what it is. You know, stop saying it's a soul saving tour and stop saying it's evangelism and mm -hmm. all this. And then man, uh, for our counterparts, our white brothers and sisters, I ran a, I wish I had wrote down the name but it's, it's on YouTube. Now these people, do they doing whole songs in tongues. I'm like, okay. So y'all can just get up 
without the unction of the Holy Spirit and just mm -hmm. go to singing in an unknown tongue. Because do y'all know what y'all saying? Because don't nobody else know what y'all Right. Saying. I saw that video. <laughs> you saw that? I'm like, what? In the I world? saw that. It's going on here. You know? But we're living in that day. I mean, cults and and all this manipulation, man, it's it's something to be aware of, but you know, when you go to talking about it, then then you know you are you're jealous or you're a hater or you this no. I'm just trying to understand what y'all what y'all doing and what y'all saying, you know, because I, I this is new to me. <laughs> That's all yeah. I got. It's new it's, to all of us right now. <laughs> I, I don't understand it, and I'm just trying to get understanding on what y'all what y'all got going here, you know. Um, let's talk about Detroit before we go. What's your take on, we got a lot of new uh, independent artists and uh, I'm seeing a lot of new projects being released uh, everywhere, almost every week now. And, um, but I'm also putting my ear to the speaker so I can see what, what it is they're singing. And is there a thin line between their musical accompaniment to become borderline R&B or, or, or this, not everybody's guilty of it, but then there are a lot of them, you know, I'm like, oh, oh, wait a minute, where is this going? And then there's some that are still straight up churchy and you know, where you can just, hey, okay. It's got an up-tempo beat. It, it engages you, you, clap your hands, pat your feet. But then some of this stuff, you have to listen for a minute and say, okay, where are we going to end up? Right. Is this going to be for the skating rink or is this going to be for the club or is this going to, you know. I, 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 I understand some people, what they say, their intent. They're trying to reach the world with the gospel. Well, just let the gospel do that. You just avail yourself to uh, put it out there to the world, and it's going to be—it's going to have to be the gospel to put their heart anyway. So you—you—you you, you can't control the Holy Spirit. But what what you think, man? Some have you have you been listening to some of the new music that some of them are putting out? Well, I haven't been listening too much to the new music, but I do understand exactly what you're saying because one of the things that I like to do, like you said, is, you know, the words, what are you saying? And who are you trying to minister to in the world, you know? And like I say, you have to still keep that foundation though. That's the key point is the foundation. It's the thing that's pretty much missing like in some of this new music now, there is no foundation. Pretty much that the world is inside the church right now. Yeah. And Whatever goes, goes. You got certain songs, you go to a skating ring, like you say, you can skate off a of gospel song, but they call it the gospel. Well, you they, know, they so. put it on a minute now, they, mm -hmm. they no problem, they put it on. Yeah, I mean, there's no problem with it. So like you said, there is a thin line between that R&B side and the gospel side, you know, what side are you trying to fall on? Yeah. You know, yeah. So. It's amazing. It's amazing the uh, how this music has stirred the nest and turned the corner. I mean, we're in commercials. I mean, in movies. I mean, they're singing it worldwide. I mean, but here's what get me. I got I got Ron Rucker coming on from Japan at the end of the month. Mm -hmm. And he tells me all the time when we emailing and talking, why are you all over in the States throwing away this music? Y'all throwing it away and we picking it up. They love gospel music over there in its true form. I mean, no frills, no, and, and, and when they come over here, they singing our stuff. They singing Oh Happy Day still. Wow. <laughs> you know, 
stuff like that. They they they're singing uh, traditional, just good gospel music because mm. their exposure, for the most part, is limited because uh, uh, they don't have nobody over there uh, like we do. You know, we 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 so spoiled. You know, I know in Detroit, man, you. You can go to every little church, every storefront church, every cathedral. You're going to find somebody that can play and sing a lot of times. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to look hard, you know. Uh, I was talking to some friends in in, uh, in Mississippi, and uh, they were saying, man, we don't have church organists down here like y'all do. I know even in my mother's hometown, Beaumont, Texas, every time I go down there, they I go to them big old churches, man. The Hammond organs be locked. I said, y'all don't. Wow. They ain't got nobody to play them, man. They got the little Sunday school uh, teacher. She she played for the Sunday school and the, and the senior choir. And uh, of course, down there, that's one of them places where when the kids grow up, they either move to Houston or go to New Orleans. They go to the big city. Mm -hmm. So, you know. Organists are far and few, you know, good organists down there, uh, just good musicians, period, for the most part. But I'm like, y'all got all these issues? I mean, they sitting there with cobwebs on them. Uh, <laughs> and so we, we, we got organists, I mean, on top of organists and musicians and singers. So when, when I'm talking to Ron, he's telling me all of those experiences and when they when they hear a song, and uh, he tries, especially now we got YouTube and 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 people are on every day. Uh, he's saying they eat it up, man. Mm. So he tell he's trying to encourage me. He said, keep writing in that vein because that's what they love. They they love and they want to sing it. They try to emulate us, uh, play like us. And here's the deal. He told me. Some of those guys are so musical until they're learned, educated musicians. They will hear the music and uh, they know composition. They will score it out while they're listening. They can be sitting there listening to a YouTube channel and writing out the music so that they can duplicate the sound and, mm. and they write out the parts. And, and, and next thing you know, two or three weeks, they got it. Wow. It like they wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man. And 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 here we are talking about we tired of singing this and tired of singing that. I used to ask Reverend Nix uh, why he would make choices sometime like he did in some of the services, because I never forget there were some Sundays, you know. And JD was very astute about that, and we, when we had different choirs singing on certain Sundays. But every now and then, Reverend, Reverend would say, I know we sung this last week, but I just, somebody here need to hear this again. Mm -hmm. You know, that type of thing. And we'd be like, okay. And man, sure enough, we start the intro and the choir starts singing. You get the show. <laughs> Listen, it's like somebody threw a firebomb in there. Yes, sir. It, it would just ignite. And I'm like, how did he know that? <laughs> you know, but those kind of experiences, you know, taught me so much uh, to look for in a worship experience. You know, whereas sometimes you you worked hard, you done trained the choir, and you want to do your latest composition, your latest arrangement, and same way with preaching. Then the Lord, you know, uh, all of a sudden, you know. Right there on the spot. It changes. Yeah, it's that's yeah. how you put away your notes, and and uh, I love a preacher that don't fight against the choir. When the choir is singing good and the Holy Spirit come in, they know how to get up and tag that song. And uh, I've seen it happen so many days by those uh, you know. I will see Reverend Cleveland do it at the convention all of the time. You know, he was good at it. He didn't care who was up singing. If that song looked like it was getting ready to light that place up, he hit that stage and keep singing it. 
Mm. We ain't gonna let this pass. Right. Know, we we gonna we gonna catch it right here and now, and ride this tide. Right. Ride it all the way out. You know, uh, and then they would get up and do things like, if the service was dragging, the musical. I, I saw him get up, call Reverend Nix to the to the organ, and he get on the piano, and they'll call the singers out. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> you know, I'm like, wow, this is just heaven on earth when it comes to music. Yes, it is. And how they they were so spiritually in tune. And it was a lesson to it. That's why I tell these young musicians, I know you done heard the latest jazz chords on MUZ or wherever the night before and your your pop artists, some of those. That ain't the time to be hitting those licks in church. <laughs> you know, just because it's offering time, you're trying to sneak something in. Right. I had to tell this one musician, <laughs> I looked at him and said, I know you know I know what that is. <laughs> no. Yeah, not, right. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, they'll sneak it in, man. You know, but thank God. Oh, hey, Pastor David, the industry is making gospel music like R and B. The church is not teaching the reverence for God, nor respect for authority or one another. The music is geared toward entertaining our flesh and not worshiping God. It is not about the relationship with our Lord or ministering to people. Come thy fount of every blessing. I need mm. uh, I need what's in the fount to be poured out on me. I hear you, Pastor David. Wow, David. wow, that's deep. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. You know, and, and, and that's what I'm saying, man. You know, everybody can't be wrong, y'all. You know, you got the voices of experience who've been there and done that, you know, just sharing, you know, their, their wisdom and knowledge about this subject matter called gospel music. You know, uh, what we're talking about today going to one day be, be passed. You know, to, just like y'all writing music now, Give it, give it 90 days, give it six months. Them songs you hear on internet, radio, and everywhere else, you ain't gonna hear them no more, <laughs> you know? But I bet you, you what you will hear, you gonna hear Precious Lord, Amazing Grace. The Dorsey Convention, they getting ready now. They gathering now in Orlando for their uh -huh. convention. I bet you they ain't gonna go through that week without hitting Precious Lord. Yeah. Some of that old, good old- You gonna hear it. I mean, you 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 know all of those guys that are gathering there, uh, those writers, you can guarantee you're going to hear a variety. You're going to hear songs for the youth. You're going to hear uh, some some from borderline contemporary traditional, but you know you're going to hear good quality gospel songwriting, and good performances and good music, good worship music. You know it's going to be great teaching. So I'm just saying. You know, as we as we do new things, write new song, we ain't got to throw the baby out with the bath water. Let's just continue to be reverent and honor God as God and and keep him first and in our music. I think we'd be all right. Because what what scares me is because nobody's really they feel like they've got body and got away. But no, come on, y'all. God is worthy to be praised and Yes, if you're really serious about honoring God with your music, then study your craft, practice. I never forget what Lee Williams said to us about how they practice. He said, we practice so long and practice enough till we can't get it wrong. Right, right. <laughs> so that's how we practice. Mm -hmm. If we don't, if we ain't got it right, we don't stop. Until we get it right. We got it right. That's then right. We'll take a break. And then nine times out of ten, we're going to come back and make sure we got right what we think we got right. Mm -hmm. so, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right about that. <laughs> it's music, not magic. Right. Praise the Lord. All right, man. This this is this has been good. We kind of skimmed the surface. We're going 
Brian, we got all y'all. All all y'all that's in that comment section, I'm going to have to call y'all and we make up a panel and and just get y'all on here lies with your smiling faces (laughs) and all of your wisdom and knowledge to contribute uh, to this great conversation. Uh, One of the questions before we leave, I get, matter of fact, one of my friends, Dr. Julius Dix, in uh, the Rochester, New York area, and I interviewed uh, Jerome Farrell. He's now in Phoenix, but he's from Buffalo, New York area. And so many of the different artists. I had Mance H. Hand on, and we congratulate him tonight. He's celebrating tonight in Memphis uh, his birthday, 60 years, and then I think 45 years in music ministry. Wow. You know, uh, he used to be minister of music for the late Bishop G.E. Patterson at Temple of Deliverance down there in Memphis Church of God in okay. Christ. Okay. He was with Bishop for years. Go and watch his interview. I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago on Fellowship of Music and Arts uh, YouTube channel. But, um, man, they, they, they was talking about how uh, it was in the day coming along where you had to um, be respectful, respect the church, respect your leader, and uh, be reverent with your music ministry. I mean, you couldn't go wrong. Mm-hmm. And, and it was, and it showed, it was fruitful. And, and uh, those of us that come from that day, wasn't nobody church hopping all around everywhere Mm -hmm. you know because back in the day a lot of churches if they didn't have regular sunday night service they had some it was because they might have had a broadcast and they broadcast live some of them in the afternoon or in the early evening Mm -hmm. you know just like it was here with bernard and and new bethel and the weekend holy cross on friday nights and and all day sundays man you know all way over the midnight you had church back-to-back broadcasts on wgpr wjlb wqbh wchb i mean man you you had it we don't have that no more no no we don't have that you know i miss that man and and some of us before they changed uh the radio station in chicago I knew I would rush home if I was out uh, since they were an hour behind. I'd listen to St. James come on at 11 and then right after that turn to AM and catch First Church of mm. Deliverance from Chicago. Chicago. The yeah. radio signal was so strong, we could get it here in Detroit. You mm. know, and uh, Clay Evans, all of them, man, yeah. just like Chicago. Uh, Detroit had that same kind of Sunday programming all day from early in the morning. You could hear a church. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, those days are gone now, and, and we've got live streaming and all of that. But to God be the glory, and to those of us, listen, I think all you that jumped in the comment section, hey, Lena, uh, thank you so much. And, uh, Listen, we got to do more dialogue because everybody's asking. So now listen, when I call y'all, because I'm going to be calling y'all. Matter of fact, I'm going to go and put this out there now. There's two things getting ready to happen. You know, uh, the Gospel Music Workshop of America started right here in Detroit. Detroit chapter is the mother chapter. Okay. And one of the things... I always prayed for, because I was a little kid running around when Reverend Cleveland was living in Detroit, and and he got Charles Nix, and they got John Everhart, Ed Smith, mm. Harold Smith, Mrs. Lemon, uh, even Dr. Clark, Maddie Clark, Beverly Glenn, uh, the Craig, because their father was the one who had the original idea, but he died at 39 years old, and James kept it going. Uh, 
Reverend Lawrence Roberts came in from London, New Jersey, and uh, they all got together and, and pulled the Gospel Music Workshop right here at King Solomon Baptist Church, right there on, was that, 12th and Pequot, 14th and yeah. Pequot. They were, listen, that, that's where our first convention was, you know, in the city of Detroit. And uh, we got this uh, relationship and fellowship with um, UMAC, GMAC, in, uh, that's what it's called, Gospel According to Chicago. And we started the fellowship some years ago, the late Bishop Charles Craig, founding Pastor Craig Moore Tabernacle and his brother James Ninja Craig. But we started the fellowship with Chicago cause GMAC was organized after they came and witnessed our first Detroit Remembers at Greater Grace on Seven Mile and Schaefer. That's where we recorded our first Detroit Remembers Project Volume 1. And everybody was there that we can get them in there. We had, I'm, I'm sure, about 300 choir members. Okay. And uh, a few years ago, we took almost that many people to Chicago. Well, we've been shut down um, during this pandemic. And um, they're going to Chicago in November. And I'm going to be on here trying to get everybody to go. I'm going to. I'm 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 gonna try to go. I plan to be there. I need y'all. Listen, let me say this. Let me say this like this. Uh because all of us well, I'm a workshop baby. Let me start there. A lot of my musical uh career is was because of the gospel music workshop. I got a chance to travel all over this country doing workshops. And that was because when Reverend Nick could go, he sent me. Charles Ford couldn't go, you know, they called me, you know, and I got to go a lot of places, thank the Lord, hallelujah, <laughs> you know, and uh, it was a wonderful experience, I mean, there, were Dave, there was David Allen, there was uh, Reverend Quincy Fielding, uh, Jeffrey LaValle, there was a lot of us, there was a group of us, Walter Scrutchins out of Ohio, uh, there was a few who were a part of that aggregation who did workshops around the chapters. A lot of times I had a chance to travel with Donald Vales. You know, we would go every year to Atlanta during Thanksgiving time to the gospel college gospel choir gathering there in Atlanta every year. So there, there's a lot of that, but um, the Gospel Music Workshop Detroit chapter, uh, uh, we, we're, we're calling, we're putting out a call to musicians and, and singers and directors to come together because uh, whatever your thought of opinion is, whatever, I don't know, we ain't got to get into all of that. But can I say this to all of us? We're all we got. We done lost too many people in the last two or three years. We ain't got time to be talking about all of that stuff. I mean, I was just telling Gene Hodge and them earlier today, Sandy Rose and them, you know, I look in my phone book. I can't call Dorgan no more. I can't call Kenneth, Kenneth Minor. Mm -mm. I can't call Ray Daniels. You know, none of none of those people. You know, Pat, Pat, Lutricia, Pat Davis. I mean, when you go down the road, Herbert Picard. I mean, we can just start calling names of so many people. And some of you lost loved ones. And some of our best well-known musicians and singers i mean they're gone so so you know bless you dr dr e Quinn weaver and we got to support him next month you know if, if they ain't sold out everything you know i thank god for that they set it out tickets ready you know uh all of you uh our sweetheart we got to pray for carol uh and and all of that i, I miss working with her but due to unforeseen circumstances, she got physical challenges. I mean, Antoine Peake, you know, all, mm -hmm. all of those, all of us, I had mine, my physical challenge. Everybody going through something. But here is the deal, uh, I, and, and, and I'm putting it on me. I, I, don't, I don't know where your heart is, 
when it comes to the Detroit chapter. Whatever it is, uh, I've squashed my differences or whatever, whatever they was doing, whatever they wasn't doing. And then when I stepped away, I had things I wanted to do, I had to do for me, you know. But I'm not too big to admit we're all we got. There's not another equ uh, eloquent weaver. Mm -hmm. There's not another Brian Gary. There's mm -hmm. not another Andre Woods. There's not another Edward Davy. You know, there's not another Anthony Finley. There's not another Keith Johnson. All y'all that chimed in, Sherry Conwell, there's not another one. There's not another Kenneth Alexander. At what point do we come together and lock arms and stand as one? and be united like we we talk about so that project is one and then there's another one that we're going to announce as soon as we get it you know uh for 2023 we need to be able to put together a thousand voice mass choir and demand the mayor to give us little caesars to sing god's praises i mean we can do it you know i ain't, i'm not taking no for an answer so I'm pulling rank on you all. Right. <laughs> all my young counterparts, Roosevelt, my son, Roosevelt, Chris, my nephew. I'm calling all of y'all out. I need y'all. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to make next week, but y'all need to sign up, chime in. Dr. Uh, LaQuint Weaver, I'm, I'm going to find Derek Milan. I'm going to find Pastor Larry Callahan. I'm finding all y'all. Elder Robert Moore, Terrence Curry, Church of God, everybody from wherever, you know, we're going to make this what we know it can be because all eyes are on Detroit. I'm telling you, all eyes are on Detroit. And when I talk to musicians across this country that I'm interviewing, the first thing they mention, they want to hear about that old history. You know, they, these people don't know us like that. They want to talk about Dr. Matty Clark, Charles Nix, Donald Vail. They want to talk about Harold Smith, Alfred Bowden, Hurry Picard, Charles Craig, and James Cleveland. They want to talk about Hewlett Jean. They want to talk about Louis McCoy, Richard Rockmore. They want to talk about Thomas Whitfield. They don't want to talk about all this mess y'all talking about. <laughs> so we stand on the shoulders of greatness. Mm -hmm. And here is my thing. I am because they were. If, if it right. never had been for a, a Craig Memorial or a Pratt Tabernacle who gave me my first chance to play on a recording, I wouldn't have never had that experience. I was there in the studio when James Cleveland talked. God had smiled on me at United Sounds, and they recorded it the same night. I was there, a little boy sitting in the corner, just awestruck, watching all of this happen, this history take place before my very eyes, you know. I, I watched how they did that, and and I was there on the Ford Auditorium stage uh, with them several times and working with Unity, working with Donaldville. I mean, so all I'm saying is I need you all uh, to show up at Craig Memorial Tabernacle. Y'all know where it is, right there on Puritan and Ardmore. Uh, next, next Friday will be good. Now, I won't be there till after Labor Day, but I'm coming. To the rehearsals you know and and i want y'all to, to if y'all don't meet me there beat me there so you'll be there when i get there okay i'm i'm, I'm reaching out to you and all of you that that want to sing you know go on and practice in the mirror now so you can have yourself ready and come on to rehearsal and sign up and let's take let's take 500 folk to chicago we can do it I, I can't hear y'all. Y'all supposed to be sending some waves of thumbs up or something. <laughs> <laughs> All y'all that went in retirement, come on back out of retirement. I'm coming out of semi-retirement. You know, if I have to come on my my walker, my wheelchair, I'm coming. Amen. We gon we gon we gon do this. So I need your cooperation, uh, just for the love of of covenant relationship. We are our brother's keeper. We are family. If something happened to me tomorrow, guess what y'all going to do? Y'all going to be at somebody's church trying to get in. Talking about Bishop Woods. 
Cause I ain't going nowhere right now, so don't don't get nervous. I at least I ain't planning to. But I'm just Amen. saying, I'm just saying now. Mm -hmm. Y'all will change your 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 agenda. Y'all will cancel whatever y'all was canceling. Got to cancel. And if they had a memorial musical for me, with me stretched out up there, oh, he was my this, he was this, he was that, you know. He gave me my music that he did. I, I can't hear that. So I need you all where I can see you all, look at you, greet you, smile. We smile back at each other. But we ain't doing all that hugging right now. You know, wear your mask, you know, bring your, you know, sanitizer. And they'll be checking you and all that kind of stuff. You know, we still kind of social distancing and doing what we got to do. But uh, I want you all to pray over it. I want you to think about it. And come on, uh, LaQuint, we got to find Derek Milan. Uh, I'm going to call him. We got to find, find everybody. Find everybody. Tell them to come on. Forget that. And uh, LaQuint, we got, I'm going to call Renee. I'm going to call Renee too. Uh, my baby, my sweetheart. Call Nene. Call Nene Williams. Tell her to get her old retired choir back together. Everybody that ain't singing now, they got to sing now. Everybody that quit, we signing them back up. <laughs> <laughs> I know y'all love me. Y'all can't help but love me, you know. So right, right. And and uh, we need you all to come because what we don't want to see happen is another one of our fallen soldiers. And then I and then at that night, I won't have to ask y'all to come. If something happened to one of us now, y'all be trying to call trying to be on program. We'll be on this program while we can all hold each other up. That's all I'm saying. Let's go together and come back together. And then whenever we call for y'all to do something at home, which I'm going to be calling, and while we're rehearsing for that, I'm going to mention what we're getting ready to do for 2023. That's going to need to include you again. Okay? We can do this. If, if we don't make a difference in Detroit for ourselves, then who going to, if not now, then when? Right, right. Come on, y'all. We got the wherewithal. Again, can I say this? That the world is waiting for a fresh sound out of Detroit. That's why I applaud the Quint. I applaud the new artist, uh, Staffy Blakely. All of y'all, Larry Whitfield, David Whitfield, who am I missing? Joe DeRico, all y'all. Some of y'all I, I, I don't know that well, may have a chance to work with, but I, 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 I enjoy your music ministry. I've heard some of you all. Come on. We need you all to come. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we gonna, those of you all, our, our sweethearts, the Whitfield Company and and Michael Fletcher Corral, I'm calling all y'all, the old lemon gospel singers, though y'all still around. And certainly our sweethearts, the oldest community choir in Detroit, the John Everhart Community Singers, Louise Williams, I know y'all, you know how to, the twins, you know, y'all come on, you know, get there if you can and uh, help us spread the word. Start talking about I think rehearsal's at 7 o'clock. Sydney McBride, am I right? I see you in the comment section. Somebody put the time of the rehearsal in the comment section and the address. Well, everybody know where Craig Memorial, even if you just got to Detroit yesterday, you don't know where it is. But if you live here, <laughs> you know where Craig Memorial Tabernacle is. You should. <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> and, and I'm taking this time. I know we over time. Um, but I, I want to put this on record because we don't we don't want a chance not having this opportunity to fellowship together again, alive and well, where we can see each other and communicate, huh? Mm -hmm. Bread together, y'all know how we do, you know. So come on, let's let's make this the trip of trips, you know. A, a lot of you not didn't get to go. To Atlanta this year to the gospel music workshop for whatever reason maybe you just didn't want to go or finances or 
or some kind of physical handicap. You just couldn't make it. But we're here, we're here now. We can have our workshop right here doing this rehearsal and fellowship time. It'll be so great to see each other. Some of y'all I haven't seen and I don't remember when, you know. And, and and you've been in prayer for me and I appreciate it. And you called and you wave and you do all that. But now I want to see y'all in person because I'm coming live in living color and in person. So I'm going to be there so you be there. Okay, thank you, Sydney. That's the right time, 7 o'clock. Is it 7 o'clock? Well, be there at 7 o'clock so you won't be late. Come at 6.30 so you can find a parking place so you won't have to walk two blocks. Okay? I appreciate y'all. Thank you, Brian, man, for chiming in and uh, all you camera shy folk. Next time I put that idea out there, y'all better jump on here. <laughs> yeah. and don't leave us out here by ourselves. Okay? Thank you for the invite. Please help a brother out. That's all I'm trying to say. Help a brother out. Uh, oh, thank you, Anthony. We do that. We start. Oh, the Washington County has a chapter. Well, y'all bring them on. I'm going to call Greg Everhart, the Inkster Court, everybody that's ever sung with the chapter, ever went and did anything with us. We calling them out. Everybody from St. James, everybody from everywhere. Uh, all those church choirs that used to be a part of the Detroit chapter. Everybody, come on. We need your lovely melodious voice. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, I got that out. I feel better now. All okay, right. listen, I'm praying for everybody. Again, let's remember our sick and shed in. And, and um, don't ask a whole lot of questions because we don't know. We, I'm not a doctor. But, but pray for Carol Cole. Uh, that God will continue to strengthen her uh, in her uh, uh, time of illness. And uh, sometime I get a chance to talk to Antoine uh, Peak, and uh, he's doing better uh, as long as he stay away from them pork chops and don't do the wrong thing. You know, have a couple of days. Antoine, I'm talking about you, so I know you're going to hear about it. You know, but thank God he's doing well and getting back. Oh, she's home now. Oh, thank the Lord. Look at God. So we're praying that that for continued progressive healing and deliverance. All right. Okay. Oh, my God. It's almost 11 o'clock. I've been running my mouth tonight. But uh, I hope you all hear my heart. And uh, let's make this happen again. Start call it's not too late. Start calling folk tonight. Say, Bishop was on there. Child, he told us we need to be there. And so that's why I'm calling you. Text everybody. Text a couple of people tonight and tell them to text a couple of people. And by everybody text a couple of people, everybody have gotten the text. You know, do a group text. Don't put me in the group, though. Do a group. <laughs> Them group texts <laughs> are something else, man. Because when one person asks it, you get the text all over again. So, you know, go on and tell them don't reply. Just, just keep forwarding the text. And you'll get everybody. Go into their inbox. Put something on your page this week. You know, uh, and, and we'll tell Evangelist Rose and, and our Minister of Music, Dr. Michael Fletcher, to uh, put up the, uh, the logo for the chapter. Or go to the chapter's page and get all the information. It's going to be on, on our page, Fellowship Music and Arts, on my personal pages. So we're going we're gonna to look forward to this. And it's going to be a great time, believe me, because of you, okay? All right, we got to go. Thank you, Brian, again, man. Uh, Bless you, Bishop. Thank you. So we can get on here and uh, have some fellowship. All right, love you all. I command the blessings of the Lord to overtake you. That is my prayer to next time in Jesus' name. Blessings. Blessings.